Folks, me again today. I'm going to be reacting to Rageaholic play Bioshock, one of my favorite games of all time. And yes, I do recommend you buy the Bioshock collection and see for yourself. There, There is also some flaws that Bioshock didn't get about what Ayn Rand really said. Hey, you can tell this game was made by a bunch of Bostonites who went to Boston College of all places. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe. Let's begin. Exactly. I've never, oh, it has. Ever, oh, this game. Fairness, it has director's commentary. English was not her first language. Exactly. Oh my god. Most successful authors of the 20th century. Oh no, I just hope we got the same one two in a row. Oh really? Um. <laughs> oh, I'll step on next. Yes! Chuck Damn, fucking Norris. Regardless, um, you know, English was not Ayn Rand's first language. The fact that she wound up being one of the most, you know, passed around writers, no pun intended. Exactly. But anyway, in this game, you get to play as Jack Ryan, Andrew Ryan's son. But anyway, Jack goes around the si underworld city of Rapture. Y'all know the story. He basically goes around, kills a bunch of splicers. And, try, and tries to kill his own dad that, that he didn't know he, he had his biological dad. But anyway, let me know in the comment section, what is your personal favorite Bioshock game? Everybody loves the second Bioshock. The first Bioshock was actually my first introduction to Bioshock. I saw gameplay of the second Bioshock on YouTube. Everyone just detests the third Bioshock Infinite. It's shocking how this stuff was back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. He says, ever going to deep dive in Ayn Rand, Objectivism, and Andrew Ryan? I'd love to, because Ayn Rand is a, as we'll talk about over the course of this, is a, a completely imperfect exemplar of objectivism. I think the problem, and there's really a fundamental flaw basically baked right into the premise of this game. Sorry for shaking my camera, that folks. That Andrew Ryan really is not the kind of capitalist that Ayn Rand idealized. He's honestly the kind of capitalist exactly. that could only exist under government regulation. Ayn Rand was really careful to separate, like, she considered the kind of capitalists, uh, for 
instance, the kind that the Michael Bloomberg's of the world. Exactly. Who, you know, they're billionaires, but Fuck they made Bloomberg. their billions by exploiting a system that was set up by a heavily regulated economy and government, right? These kind of, this is why these people vote overwhelmingly Democrat. For years, people have said, you know, why, are, why are these robber barons all voting for Democrats? Well, it's because they got their billions because of Democrats, because of the regulation exactly. that allows them to maintain their monopolies. Those monopolies could not exist without government interference. What? So... So it's Your interesting that Ayn Rand is, is criticized on this basis, but it's a false dichotomy because this she called these people parasites in her novel exactly. philosophy. Right. Um, she considered a true capitalist to be someone who made it on its own and competed in a free market and was constantly improving his product and his business because he was forced to compete in a free market. This is kind of the core distinction is that these sort of modern robber barons don't want a free economy. There's nothing they want less exactly. than a free market. So that, that's kind of one of the core intellectual fallacies that Ken Levine embraces in order to sort of prop up this um, this false premise, basically. All right. Uh, hardcore bunny. Hey, Razor. How's it swinging? Anywho, I wanted to ask. Short, shriveled, and always to the left. No. Yeah. Uh, anywho, I wanted to ask you, considering doing another arcade on Underworld Ascendant, oh, I'd love that. I'd love to. Um, we have not done an arcade on Underworld Ascendant since the last, the fourth update, they were gigantic. Yeah. They're, they're, they did four huge updates. They basically made a whole other game. Uh, exactly. I believe the game needs a little more love, even since uh other side seems to have abandoned it after update four last august yes yeah. fuck rpg codex yeah the, the, our, the, the dog pile that happened around that game it started months if not a full year before the game even came out which is always how you know you're dealing with hive mind bullshit and it's unfortunate because now you got the same company working on System Shock 3. There's, exactly. There's reports, I don't know how accurate they are. I've seen um, concepts of... People being fired or... I've know, seen concepts of Bioshock 4 on YouTube. Model, getting rid of Some of them said in the 1970s, which, which could be a good good market for them. System Shock 3, no one should <coughs> fail. You know, we yeah. don't need the only third-party air quotes third party middle market exactly be at a fucking bowling, not least of which because CD Projekt isn't fucking middle market right they're triple A they're big, bigger than Bethesda but uh yeah I, unfortunately we got we basically have the second coming of living class however you feel about Underworld Ascended um and it was launched in, definitely in a in a janky state and so forth um I found the launch version of the game to still be awesome, but it was jank, right? I wouldn't say anything with Rose, nothing that I played anyways. I didn't, in full disclosure, I didn't play that far into, the, into that version of the game, so I just didn't have time. But nothing I saw rose to the level of, it's busted in half, I can't possibly play this, it's like right. not playable. I, I didn't see anything like that. But I have played now that there's four updates in, and it's way better. It's, it's much, much, much better. Now, you still do have the level of jank and glitches and so forth that is incumbent in this genre of game, which is actually this game, Bioshock, we're about to play, and Underworld Ascendant share a genre and actually share an art designer. Um, same exact art designer worked on Underworld Ascendant. But yeah, I'd love to. Uh, the short answer there, the non rambly answer is yes. And we'll do a few more here. Private Timothy Jackson. Dear Razor and T-Buggy, I hope this letter reaches you and that all is well at home. For I am in, uh, I am deployed here in Iran, fighting in World War III. My platoon is low, <laughs> and men and ammo are scarce. Oh, God. I fear that I won't make it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Give t Bug a hug for me, and have Eve send doodles. I'm sorry, man. I'm over here in the post-apocalypse after... Net neutrality was repealed. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm, I'm hunkered down in my post-nuclear fallout shelter with a bunch of dried fucking meals. Remember that shit? 
Remember people on YouTube, fucking hacks on YouTube, who somehow are still fucking popular, even though they got exactly. the warmest ass hats about the repeal of net neutrality? Right. Imagine my old Bioshock. <laughs> That's a good comment. The repeal of net neutrality. Oh, it's the end of the world. Fucking hell. Uh, uh, these people get away with it. I mean, I guess it's because their content is so disposable. Exactly. going to go back and watch. Shit. No, it's because these hipster YouTubers answered the corporate. Hey guys, did you know headline? Did, did you know headline? Look, what I try to do on my content is basically inform y'all and and give you the facts and not bullshit y'all. By the way, this stream is brought to you by Lootbox. I don't do sponsors. I bow to no sponsor. Monster, Monster Energy Baseball Cap. <laughs> uh, fancy. I better be co-hosting with Ripper fucking Owens, because that's the only way that's happening. Fancy Pelosi, cocaine Mitch. I am the Senate. <laughs> Mitch it's Romney. Treason. He's guilty. Cocaine Mitch. It's treason, <laughs> then. Utah GOP. Of... Expel him. Also Mitch. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love democracy. <laughs> I love the Republic. We need that one. That's good. Uh, and Gimp with a Collar says, What's your beef with uh, Yankee Marshall? I used to hate him, but he grew on me. He's very snarky, but he's insanely pro Second Amendment. Insanely pro Second Amendment. Hmm. Uh, I don't know about that one, Chief. Exactly. I think, I, I think if one of his Blue Dog Democrats I don't trust hypocrites him, at all. The Second Amendment tomorrow, I think he'd splay his ass cheeks wide. And I think he'd even throw us, like, lavender scent on the butt cheeks before he does it to fucking wank shaft. Look, they claim that they're for the people. Meanwhile, they're out there funding all all these abortion clinics and bullshit like that. that It's complete hypocrisy made flesh. Non-issue five weeks later. What was it? uh, Fernando? (sighs) The guy in, was it uh, Michigan or something? (laughs) <laughs> he fat. The guy who was in the car baked. He was on marijuana. Right he now, literally, he sorry literally for shaking my camera, folks. While he's driving, which is impaired driving, motherfuckers. Like, now, is this okay. the one that went into the river, or was that what? No, 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 no. This guy was high and whatever, and and he had his kid in the car in the back seat and his wife next to him, and you know the the guy winds up getting pulled over doesn't follow any of the officer's directions, then starts reaching for something at his side and gets shot and killed. Now, I do think the officer, I'm blanking a little bit, it was like Fernando something, right? Uh, it's like a, like Back in my day, people were making case. Sorry, I was just reading the comments and Razor Fist. Um, anyways, Stream. Uh, oh, Fernando Castile. Just thank you. Fernando Castile, who, I do not agree, a cop should be shooting him. You know, I, I don't, that cop is basically a fucking murderer. I think he overreacted. Exactly. That said, the guy could not have done more things wrong. In terms, like, if, if Fernando Castile had taken even one basic gun safety class, he would have told exactly. him to do everything he did in that traffic stop. And of course, part of that is the fact that he was fucking impaired, which he shouldn't have been driving impaired, and he certainly shouldn't have been driving impaired with his fucking kid in the car. Right. Um, that's, I think, what I find so galling about the situation is the wife, the, the wife or girlfriend filmed the whole thing and filmed the kid crying and whatever after the guy got shot in the chest a bunch of times. And she's horrified that all of this happened in front of her kid. Not so much horrified with the drug use in front of the kid, but, but very horrified at the fact that her husband had been pulled over. Um, when, uh, the whole thing was just ridiculous. When you are pulled over, and uh, again, I think this is authoritarian in the extreme anyways, but you can see, like, there are several grand rules, like, you're, you're sort of told day one, and that is, number one, put your hands on the steering Bring wheel. Bring me a body bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Undertaker! Oh, fuck it, bot, what have you done? Oh. <laughs> the first thing you're supposed to do is what? Put your hands on the steering wheel and not move them. You're, you're like asking the cop what you're supposed to do, and when if they say like, "Hey, go grab your your whatever," then 
think that's when you reach for whatever you want. But this cop was literally telling him not to reach for anything. So not only is he not putting his hands on the steering wheel, he's literally like disobeying the cop, saying like five times, don't fucking reach for anything. Just don't. Like, leave it alone. Um, again, I don't think you should have shot him fucking however many times. But and that's the main thing. Is I think it was just overkill, to be honest. Um, if, you, if you had shot him once, the guy probably would have lived and, uh, and, and also would have been immobilized. I think the guy at the end of the day was and Yankee Marshall jumped dick first in that entire situation, totally half cocked, didn't understand any of the particulars, didn't even consider the responsibility that a gun owner has just being out there um, in a traffic stop and like what you're actually told to do and what you're supposed to do. Just immediately jumped into the Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin know, false fucking narrative. Yankee Marshall just fucking lied to his entire audience when it comes right down to it. He was full of fucking shit um, on that. Go watch his series of videos on that and check out the likes to dislikes on those fucking propaganda things. Exactly. Right? Like, Yankee Marshall is a fucking embarrassment. And exactly. Any fucking audience is a joke. Which, uh, I don't know. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Uh, I just want to point out here in the chat, both James Bercy and thy Raven Wings go, Wait, isn't Dr. Thunder a sponsor? <laughs> God, I wish. He has a doctorate in Thunder. <laughs> uh, let's continue here. Uh, no, let's not. Let's play oh, yeah. the fucking game. Oh, let's just play the game. Get it over with! I guess. No, I'm not going to start singing. But that makes them the governor. This is a good example. You know, making some wise art design choices. Like 1960, the Mid Atlantic. Oh, and for those of you who are curious, we have the uh, dim debate somewhere going in the background here. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys, I didn't turn on the subtitles. I'll, I'll shut up during this course. Kindly. Still one of the coolest little title screens. Expressionism is the obvious answer. If you watch Metropolis, that comes screaming into view. For sure. I mean, if you talk about... Um, subtitles... Yes, I do recommend Rageaholic's channel. Art subtitles? Oh, that's right. That's This game has the thing where when you highlight an object, it like... You tells you what it is. What it is sometimes, which I'm not. I'm not a big fan of. So we'll go dialogue subtitles. Dialogue subtitles. But yeah, like when I was talking about Thief Two, that's a good example of what I'm talking about. That game has clear Art Deco influences in it, but it's also got expressionism because it's so inform It's so inspired by film noir and stuff. Um, and film noir has film noir is basically expressionism mixed with a crime film. Like, that's really... It's, it's like a crime film lit like a horror film. Uh, and, and horror films, of course, are hugely influenced by expressionist cinema, so... Let's... Okay! There we are. Wow. Game still looks Remember gorgeous. how novel it was at the time to have water droplets on a screen? And this was one of the first, like, big-budget games that did that regularly, I remember. Now I just want every game in the next generation just to get this shit off the screen. No shit. Like, vignetic, can oh, vignetic, that's just badass. Can vignetic just die, please? Is that that's a, a thing? little, 
Is that next kind of like the angel from, uh, you know, Angel Watch would be too. A little. Ken Levine, for those who are not aware, of course, uh, laid out the basic design document for the Thief series. So he's the reason the Hammerites and the Pagans and all that. He basically wrote this great big d uh, design document that more or less was adhered to for the entire, the, the whole basic idea of there being three groups, you know, having the, the Keepers and the Pagans and the Hammerites and whatnot and the delicate balance between chaos and order and all that stuff. Right. That that whole basic premise of Thief was more or less adhered to it until Thief. Oh, Mason follows up with, uh, do you think Art Deco could blend well with Neo Gothic, or would you think it'd be too clashing? Oh, that's aged pretty well. Sorry, uh, could blend well with what Neo Gothic? Yeah. Uh, well, I, have you seen the Batman films? <laughs> the good ones, I mean. Uh, no, the no, good no. Batman films, the ones who are actually worth the crap. What country is there a face from people like me? For those of you who have not read Atlas Shrugged, obviously the core premise is. The government of the future, keep in mind, this was a predictive text. It was not a reaction to something that had happened. It was predicting something that wound up happening. Exactly. Uh, more or less like promise. I said, you'd be surprised how the past can predict the and future. The became so socialist. It, it exactly. Became Fuck the socialist. Uh, we need to take back our country. Through we need to annihilate these socialists. Prominent businessman who basically went by a code name because he to get away with it kind of created his own utopia and, and like recruited one by one uh, various members of industry so that he basically created his own settlement, his own country where people could actually live under laissez faire capitalism and actually earn, actually live off what they had earned exactly of being taken by the government and shit and it basically so the, that's really where this concept was stolen from. They just put it in the bottom of the ocean. Exactly. Grossly misrepresented its philosophy. Exactly. As you're about to see. Oh, gorgeous art design choices, though. The, the, uh, red, the red starfish right next to the... <laughs> The shrug statue is a right. nice, not terribly subtle touch, by the way. No symbolism there. Somebody's about to get bent. There we go. See, here's the first of many misrepresentations. When is the last time the, the men in Washington said it belongs to the poor and not to the man in Washington? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you can tell this game was made in fucking Boston by exactly. the people who had graduated from MIT. Exactly. <laughs> no. Bullshit. Remember when Moscow said it belonged to everyone and not to Stalin? Yeah. Still a great opening. And that's another misrepresentation right there. The exactly. The philosophy of objectivism is like moral in nature. Exactly. You, know, you would have scientists that were bound by morality would be basically an inversion. Uh, it's like it's like a hyper morality, it, like an almost an unrealistic and idealized morality. You want to make a criticism of it, it's that it's too moral. It sounds fucking terrifying. Like exactly. Oh, this intro is just. Oh, it's, it's so classic. The bag. There's, a, there's a reason this one game of the year. Exactly. <laughs> it was great too how this game kind of came out of nowhere too. Anybody remember that? Exactly. This was probably, 2007 was probably... I was on edge about this game back in the days.
understand this is the remastered version. So. Exactly, I recommend the remastered version. Because last time I played played this game, it was on said, 360. But word of Vice Kitties, don't be a communist splicer. It's John Cena. <laughs> I love the kazoo version. <laughs> Try not to read it too much into the sickles on the hands. <laughs> Fuck the sickles. I was telling. Look out, it's Antifa. Well, well, kinda. Fuck Antifa. It's one of the more interesting things about this game and the second. The second one really didn't get nearly as much uh, praise. Exactly. Some valid reasons for that, and some not so valid reasons for that. But um, the second one, one of the things I really like about it is that while this game is sort of a clunky critique of objectivism, that one is more of a critique of socialism, and exactly. I think it's a much less lazy critique <laughs> than this one is. I'm not entirely persuaded Ken Levine was able to get all the way through the novel at the shrugged. Exactly. <laughs> to be honest. And I don't blame him, it's a fucking tome. So you're saying he based the game on the cliff notes? <laughs> oh, that is just... Yeah. You never get tired of the business in this game. It, it, you just never do. I, it, and it's crazy. It's one of the few games from that era where I, I can remember specific rooms still. And I only played it once. chamber over here. Can I use it? Sweet. Oh, that's a pretty off couple here. Pretty good map system. I forgot about this. As I recall, it was pretty straightforward. I know, I know. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, and if you play Underworld Ascended, you can tell. It's exactly. Same. I'd like to take a moment to say hello to the record 1,800 people in the room. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining uh, us. We should, we should in a moment check in on the debates just to laugh for a moment. Uh, Warren is... Oh, oh Mazakin is here. Fuck <laughs> Warren. Oh. <laughs> Something jumped up and bit me. <laughs> see, see what he did there, Forrest Ooh, Gump reference. Something jump up and bit me. Fucking drones. Splicers. Right now, Senator Warren is talking about Afghanistan and war. <laughs> Now, where have you heard that one before? Less than 60% of the land. I didn't know that. Neither did she. Time to bring our troops home. Yeah, that's what Trump's doing. That's what Trump is doing. Exactly. 
that's what President Trump is actually doing for once. Less preaching and more action, ass munch. Eve hypo. Is Miss Eve giving you hype? It's filled with hard R's. <laughs> Demonetization. Keep her away from the mic, please. Adam and Eve, even the Bible. It's a true biblical fact. I don't know. It depends on who came first. Was it Adam or was it Eve? I think Adam came first. Then all of a sudden, the devil made Eve or something. It's great too. I don't know. Depend. <laughs> depend on whose facts are more prominent. Because modern day Christendom, they'll just rewrite and falsify the biblical story of what actually happened during that period. Buildings from back when people actually gave a shit when you built things. And you can still see this kind of art design. Building design, rather. Can we just go back to this art style? What was wrong with it? Why did people stop? Oh, is that all? Oh. Nothing. Now, I wouldn't have walked towards the banister. You think of the future, you, you know how, like, in old 60s comics, everything was caused by an atom bomb? Yeah. Exactly. Everything was nuclear. And before that, it was. What was it before that? Like 30s and 40s, what caused it? Uh, when you were making it? Well, I guess it just depended. Because a lot of the superheroes didn't have powers, right? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. You're welcome, Professor Pig. <laughs> we have a lot of suggestions. Ghosts, magic, x-rays, gas, space rays. Gas a lot of times. Yeah, space rays, stuff like that. Hello. Great intro for the Big Daddy, by the way. Great way to introduce them. So anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, follow me on me on TikTok, God bless y'all, and I'll see you next video.